the top news headlines some national media channels report and Birind will get second term as chief minister but bjp yet to make an official announcement COVID-19 vaccination drive for children of 12 to 14 years age group begins in state. And MPCC President and Lock and Dandis resignation from MPCC President Post. Hello, a very good evening. You're watching the Mami TV English News in focus with me, Cheng Leng and Bikaidem, the news in detail. As suspense over the Chief Minister post continues in the state, caretaker Chief Minister Anne Birind, MLA Bishwajit, and State BJP President A. Sada attended a crucial meeting with Central BJP leaders in New Delhi yesterday. Today, too, the State BJP leaders are holding a series of meetings with Central leaders over the formation of new government in Manipur. The state leaders reportedly held a marathon meeting with the central BJP leaders at 10 last night. The suspense over who will be the next chief minister still continues in the state. However, some national media channels carried reports that the current chief minister in Goa and Manipur, Pramod Sawan and Anbirind will get second terms. The media reports said that according to BJP sources, the two chief, chief minister will retain the chief minister post after a series of meetings at Prime Minister Narendra Modi's residence to discuss the leadership issue. However, an official confirmation is yet to be received from the BJP National Office. Speaking to media persons after the meet held last night, caretaker Chief Minister Anne Birind had stated that BJP is a party with discipline and that the decision of the party high command will be final. However, the formation of the new government will likely be after the Yaoshan Festival, Birin said. The state joined the nation in expanding the nationwide COVID vaccination drive for children in the age group of 12 to 14 years. The vaccination drive for the state was launched at the vaccination center open at Lump Hill RD Wing today. The vaccination drive was jointly launched by National Health Mission and Family Welfare Services after the state immunization officer T. Manihar announced the SAM yesterday. Students of different schools, accompanied by the teachers and children along with their parents, came to the vaccination center to get the COVID jab. Speaking to media persons, AFI of the center, Dr. Wakabam Joyson said, the vaccination drive for the age group was launched to prevent children in 12 to 14 years age group to prevent them from contracting dreaded COVID-19 infection as the government has ordered commencement of physical classes. He stated that the vaccination drive also be carried out in every school in the state. Dr. Joyson also appealed to parents and guardians to get the children vaccination and make the initiative of the government successful. Fungi, a staff of Lysining Tau School who brought the students of the school to get vaccinated stated that students were brought to, the, to get the vaccine jab after taking consent from their parents and advised by higher authority. She also appealed to the parents to get their children vaccinated as schools are now open. 
taking responsibility of the major defeat of Indian National Congress candidates in the 12th Manipur Legislative Assembly elections, President of Manipur Pradesh Congress Committee MPCC has standard his resignation from MPCC polls on moral ground with immediate effect. In his letter, Lockin said that the step was taken to facilitate the party in taking up necessary action. Congress Interim President Sonia Gandhi on Tuesday has asked the party's chief, state chiefs of Manipur, Uttar Pradesh, Uttarakhand, Punjab and Goa to resign to facilitate reorganizations of the Pradesh Congress committees after poll drubbing. The information was shared after a meeting of Congress Working Committee. The reasons for the party's massive defeat in the recent state assembly elections in these five states were also reviewed during the meet. During the meet, Sonia Gandhi reportedly expressed the need to reorganize and make necessary arrangements to strengthen the party. Besides, Congress unanimously agreed to make Sonia Gandhi continue to serve as the party leader. Taking to Twitter, Chief Spokesperson of AICC Randeep Surjewala said that the move is aimed at reorganizing the PCCs after the party's poll drubbing in the recently concluded assembly elections in all the five states. The curfew imposed in post poll violence ridden Jeribam district has been lifted for some hours. Additional SP operations of Jeribam district E.K. Sadananda also stated that the suspension of mobile data services in the district has also been lifted. Speaking to media persons at the press meet held at his office, additional ASP E.K. Sadananda said that curfew under CRPC 144 imposed in the district in view of the rising poll violence has been lifted from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. today. Besides the suspension of the mobile data services has been withdrawn, he said. The additional ASP also informed that police are carrying out manhunt for those involved in the post post violent and FIR has been registered against some of them. Sadananda stated that even if the violence mongers are hiding in Assam, the Jeribam police will seek help from Assam police to arrest them. He also stated normal clean in gradually back in the state after Jeribam DC and SP appealed to the people through their community leaders to maintain peace. ไอ้บันทึกสกุลเนี่ยยังคนละไม่เหมือนจังดราเอ่อเอฟไอเอสโลกเลยอะดูกะมุยบิจิกามตุนสุชาชิตตรงนี้อะดูกะมุยจิภ
Here we have a short commercial break. Please stay tuned for more update. Alex Sublimation. Pongnavazar Infal, JMG Shopping Complex, Pass Floor. Mafa Masida, Mug Printing, Cover Printing, T shirt, Keychain, Photo Frame, Sublimation Gipot Kuding Mug, Wholesale the Fangbigani. Items available are Mug Printing, Cover Printing, T shirt, Keychain, Photo Frame. All the mentioned items will be available at wholesale rate in LX Sublimation. Welcome back again after the break. India lodged 2,876 new COVID-19 cases with 98 deaths in the last 24 hours. With this, the total daily of COVID-19 cases surged to 4.29 crore, while the active cases dipped to 32,811, according to Union Health Ministry data. Meanwhile, the death count climbed to 5.16 lakh with 98 fresh fatalities, and the active cases comprised 0.08% of the total infections, while the National COVID-19 recovery rate further improved to 98.72 percent, the ministry said. With the reductions of 1,106 cases, India's active caseload has declined to 32,811. On the other hand, with 3,884 patients having recovered in the last 24 hours and the cumulative daily of recovered patients surged to 4.24 crore. On the vaccination front, India's COVID-19 vaccination coverage has exceeded 180.60 crore across the country. As COVID-19 vaccination for children aged between, between 12 and 14 years began today, Prime Minister Narendra Modi lauded India's efforts and said the country's vaccination drive is people-powered. Prime Minister lauded scientists and innovators for their commendable efforts in the world's largest vaccination drive. Prime Minister Modi also said that India began work to create vaccines in early 2020 to protect the citizens and strengthen the fight against the pandemic. Manson may be mad that as per the recent guidelines by the government, children belonging to the particular age group are being jabbed with COVID bags manufactured by Biological E. United States on Tuesday said India would not be violating U.S. sanctions by purchasing discounted Russian oil but added that such a move would put the world's largest democracy on the wrong side of history. Asked about the reports of India considering a Russian offer to buy crude oil and other commodities at discount price a week after the U.S. banned all Russian energy imports, White House Press Secretary Jan Pisaki said the Joe Biden administration message would be for countries to abide by U.S. sanctions. Earlier, India has not condemned the invasions of Ukraine and has abstained from voting at the United Nations calling Russian oil deal with Indian Ukraine Russia war. U.S. officials have said in recent weeks they would like India to distance itself from Russia as much as possible while also recognizing its heavy reliance on Moscow for everything from arms and ammunition to missiles and fighter jets. In what could be the first visit by any senior Chinese leader since the violent class at the line of actual control in Ladakh, China's Foreign Minister Wang Yi may visit India later this month. He is likely to be in Nepal before his India visit. India and China have continued military-level talks to resolve the Ladakh situation without much success. Minister Wang Yi had earlier this month said that China and India had encountered some setbacks in the bilateral relations in recent years and called for managing their differences over the boundary issue through equal footing consultations for a fair and equitable settlement. He also said that some forces have always sought to stop tensions between China and India in an apparent reference to the U.S. India's relation with China right now is going through a very difficult phase after basing violated border agreements, External Affairs Minister A.S. J. Sankar had said at the Munich Security Conference in Germany this year. He also underlined that the state of the border will determine the state of the relationship. A day after Defence Minister Rajnath Singh explained to Parliament how a missile was inadvertently launched on March 9 and landed in Pakistan, a Bloomberg report claims that Pakistan had prepared to launch a similar missile in a retaliatory strike. Pakistan held back because an initial assessment indicated something was amiss, Bloomberg quoted a name 
Sources are saying the Indian Air Force fired the Brahmos medium-range cruise missile from Haryana's Ambala, about 200 km from Delhi. The Bloomberg report see the missile damaged some residential property but caused no casualties. India didn't use the direct hotline between the top army commanders on both sides to inform Pakistan, the Bloomberg report said. Instead, Air Force officers moved to shut down the missile system to avoid any further launches, reported Bloomberg. After China, South Korea is now facing its worst COVID-19 outbreak as the country hit another milestone recording over 4 lakh infection cases today. According to a media report, South Korea reported 4 lakhs and 741 new daily COVID-19 cases, the highest since the country reported its first COVID-19 case in January last year. Most of these cases were said to be locally transmitted with fresh cases. South Korea's overall caseload has now surged to 76.29 lakh, the Korea Disease Control and Prevention Agency was quoted. Now let's recap the headlines once again. Some national media channels report Anne Birin will get second term as chief minister but BJP yet to make official announcement. COVID-19 vaccination drive for children of 12 to 14 years age group begins instead. And MPCC President and Locken tenders resignation from MPCC President Post. That's the end for today's news English bulletin. Keep watching my TV news for more updates.